Now, how many of you like to just visit the graveyard? I like to walk in the graveyard. I like to try to find the oldest marker that's there. And then I like to see what's written on the marker. It's quite interesting what you read on markers in the graveyard. I, I remember reading this story. It said this uh, one, one marker in the graveyard that was this phrase. Uh, As you are, I once was. As I am, you soon will be. Prepare, my friend, to follow me. And somebody put a postscript on that and said, As you are, yes, I will be. I am not to prepare to follow thee until I find which way you went. <laughs> so that's very good wisdom, isn't it? So they're in the graveyard now. And uh, most folks don't like to visit the graveyard. But all of us have to do that every now and then because we know somebody that's going to die. So Jesus meets a man that's been out in the graveyard. He's been out in the graveyard. And notice the Bible tells us he's, uh, he's a man with an unclean spirit. This man was full of the D-I-B-I-L. Devil. Now I know that most people today don't believe in the devil. Or preachers, that's just a feeling of the imagination. You got a whole lot of answers to come up with. Who do you blame for all the jokes going on in the world if you don't have a devil? Hmm? Many people blame God. But anyway, this man was had an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. He, he was not out there to exist and he lived there. And no man could find him. No, not with chains. The Bible tells us that they had caught this guy and bound him with chains. And then notice what happened. Because that he had been often bound with feathers, that means balls or ankle chains, and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him. This man was full of the devil, lived in the tombs, and the Bible says they had caught him because he caused all kinds of problems and troubles, and they bound his hands and his feet with chains, and he just broke them off like he was breaking off paper. I want to ask you a question. you believe that? Yes. Notice what the Bible says. And the feathers broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. They couldn't tie him up, they couldn't tame him. Now, and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs. He lived in the mountains and in the tombs and he was crying and cutting himself with stone. He was so under the influence of the devil that he wouldn't even control his own self. And at night they'd hear <coughs> Something's going to happen. 
something's going to happen. And Jesus was now he's on the shore. He stepped off the boat, and here comes this guy full of the devil, possessed by the devil, under the power of the devil, and he comes up to where Jesus is, and notice what Jesus said. He came and he worshipped him. Isn't that remarkable? This man fell down at the feet of Jesus and worshipped him. And notice, and cried in verse 7 with a loud voice and said, What am I to do with thee, Jesus? By the way, did you know this? The devil is not, is not, the devil is not an atheist. In that remark, it's just these smooth, educated idiots we got today that says there's no God. The Bible says that the devil believes and trembles. Oh yes, he knows that's God. And the Bible tells us that when this man ran up to from where he was, he said, what, what do you have to do with us, Jesus? Thou Son of the Most High God, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. There's something about the devil and Jesus that just does not get along. Jesus and the devil just does not get along. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, Why is thy, what is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Now Legion, what he had in mind on this particular island of Gadaria, place of Gadaria, there were ten little cities there. And there was a Roman garrison there, and a, a Roman legion that lived there. And a Roman legion was 6,000 men plus 150 horsemen. 6,000 walking soldiers plus 150 soldiers that rode horses. So he asked this man, said, what is your name? He said, Legion, for we are many. Now you can understand, it's not the man talking. This is the devil. So am I to believe from this scripture that this man had 6,000 plus demons <coughs> living in him? That's what the book said, didn't it? Did you know this? The very air in this room, the very presence, the vacancy that you cannot see, that world that you can't see this morning is charged with demons. There are demons in this building this morning. Well, they ain't all that sad, but they are. <laughs> they're, they're, they're demons, isn't it? Right there is a demon. Right here is a demon. Right here is a demon. There are demons sitting beside you. Now don't look at the person and say, well, you know, but there are demons around you. Because the Bible tells us that the devil is in control of these demons and the power of the anger. Have you ever, have you ever had an experience? Let me ask you this now. Have you ever had an experience that you just felt that someone or something was saying? Have you ever had that experience? Well, let me tell you this, it's real. And the Bible tells us that he said, we are many. In verse 10, and he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. We don't, don't bother us. Leave us alone. We're content. The devil's always content. Anytime he can have a place where he can work, he's content. Now he goes on to say, now there was there nigh under the mountains a great herd of swine. A pigs, hogs, if you please. And they were there. And all the devils besought the Lord. They asked him, 
Don't, don't just kick us out of this guy. Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. Does the devil get into animals? Yes, he does. You see, the devils, demons, that, that demon that's standing right here and right here, he can't do anything until he gets into a body. He, can, he has an outside influence, but once he can get into a person's body, then he has the power of the human body to work through. And he takes control over that body as the body relinquishes authority to him. That's why he'll come to you with every kind of temptation and trial that you can face. He's real. Now the Bible goes on to say this. Let us go into these pigs. And the Bible says, Forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. Now, the man was living with these things, with these demons. And notice what the swine did. The swine went crazy. What humans live with that animal's crazy. So that tells me that animals got a little more sense than most humans we know. <laughs> Amen? In some respect. But the Bible says, And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea. There were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. <laughs> They're running down. The hogs are running down the hill out over and doing swan dives off the cliff. You know? 2,000 of them. 2,000. 6,000 lived in one man. 6,000 went into 2,000 homes. Now, this is not the end of the story. And they went, they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what was that was up. Okay, they come out to see what's going on. The people who own the hogs. By the way, the reason the hogs were there at that, I told you that there were a Roman garrison there, a Roman legion there, and their favorite food was salt pork. <laughs> That's why they had the hogs there. So now the Bible tells us and they come to Jesus. They went, the people who own the halls. I mean, hey man, you're, you're interrupting my business. Can you imagine the fellow that owns these halls? Now, it wasn't Jews, it was Gentiles. Because a pig is unclean to a Jew. He don't eat pork. So these were Gentile people. These were... There's only two types of people in the world, Jews and Gentiles. Jews and Gentiles. And those Jews or Gentiles are saved or lost. That's it. Period. Amen? Amen. If we believe this book, <coughs> now the Bible tells us that we all come from who? Adam. Who? Adam. Is that what the Bible said? We we'll all come from Adam and Eve. Amen. And then God made a distinction and chose the Jews to be a special people and everybody else is a Gentile. And if you're not a Jew, then you are a Gentile. And Gen the word Gentile means dog. That's what they considered Gentile. You say, well, I don't like it. Well, they didn't do about that. Now, I ain't going to call you no dog. I'm going to call you my brother or my sister. Because we were created by the same God. Amen? Amen. And 
you notice the Bible says, and they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. Uh, they couldn't believe it. 2,000 of my pigs have been killed. You mean 2,000? Yeah, every one of them all. Every one of them. And the Bible says they came to Jesus. They came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion. Now look at this thing. Something doesn't happen now. When he got off the boat, the first thing he saw was this man coming to him here full of the devil. He was doing all kinds of things. Now they see him. He's, the Bible, this one said, said he's even got clothes on. Mm -hmm. He got clothes on and in his right mind. Let me tell you this. The devil will mess up your mind like nothing else. Amen? Amen. And that's the first thing the devil fights for is your mind. He control your mind. He control the rest of you. Amen? He didn't grab Eve by the hair of the head and start punching her in the face. No, he, he just planted a little seed up here in her mind. He said, God is holding something back on you. He is not telling you the whole story. He's holding something good from you. And it has something to do with that tree right there. And Eve began to look at that tree in an altogether different way than she'd ever looked at it. And as a result, she disobeyed the Lord. And you see, the devil plays with your mind. The game is not in the heart. The game is not with the limbs, the eyes, and all of that. The game is up here. That's where, and the devil has got your game. And my game. He knows what you think. That's why he gets up here. He puts all kinds of thoughts in your mind. He puts thoughts in your mind about people. He puts thoughts in your mind about your job, about your boss, about all kinds. He'll plant things in your mind about everything in the world. <coughs> and when you think about it, that moves that out so we can put something else in. Now they came out to see what it was. They saw the man sitting there, clothed in his right mind, and notice what they said. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him, that's verse 16, that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And how did the people react to this? Jesus has come into their town and took the worst specimen of human flesh in their town that caused them problems night in and night out, and caused them all kind of turmoil and straightened him out, clothed him, he's acting normal, and what do they want Jesus to do? They said, we want you to leave town. Hit the road, Jesus. Did you know this? When people get saved, there are some people that get awful unhappy about it. Especially if you get crazy about this thing now. I mean, it's all right if you want to get saved, go down and join the church and act halfway religious. But now, I mean, don't go fanatical. Don't go fan on it now. Don't, don't go postal, man. Don't get all excited. Don't, don't, I mean, don't talk to nobody on your job about it. My goodness, that's crazy. Some people got this enough religion to make them miserable. But I'm going to tell you what, if what you've got don't work outside of this building, what you've got's not enough. Amen. And it's not the right stuff. Amen. 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 Now, that's this introduction. Let's get on with it. Sorry. <laughs> Since tomorrow's Halloween, I thought we would just talk about this a little bit. Have you noticed that when I was just noticing out here, we had a trunk of trees the other night, and everybody did really good, and we 
we got a good, a good turnout and all of that. But you know what's interesting? I was looking at the kids that come. None of those kids were dressed up like real people. You don't know what's happening. They were not dressed like real live cats. Some of them had some of these old hideous looking masks on. Isn't it remarkable how our society has caused the heroes of our young people to be people who are not real? After all, do you know anybody who can stick his fingers to a building and go up it and then flip out a string and fly out over New York City and put a mask on and call him and say, Wall preacher, that's just, that's just fun stuff. That's what the devil wants us to believe. It's just fun stuff. But when we come to people like Moses, when we come to people like Abraham and David, I don't want to hear that trash. They're not excited. No, they just walk with God. <laughs> they just live with God. They just, Moses just was around on the mountain with God and God talked to him face to face. They don't know it. They don't know ding dong about Moses or Abraham or David or any of the rest. But they know all they can be known about all these false people. Yep. <laughs> now you can say amen or you can say on me. It doesn't tell you need to do. Have you noticed how we do that? And we wonder why. We wonder why we have our, our kids aren't interested in the Bible. I tell you why. Because the devil's got them so interested in that which ain't real. That they have no time for that which is. Tell it. And it's, and it's really, really sad. Now there are three things I want you to see in this and I'll be through here in about three hours. Okay? <laughs> I want you to see number one, there are three worlds, there are three worlds that are introduced to us in this passage of Scripture. First of all, there's the underworld of the spirit being. The underworld of the spirit beings that's introduced to us. And then there is the visible world of human experience, that which takes place with us every day. And then thirdly, there's the other world where it is controlled by God. So in these three worlds, in these three worlds come together, there are some things that happen. Every person on this, on this earth today is praying for the same action that this poor man who lived in the day. It was quite interesting. We don't know how he got to the point that he is, that he has mentioned in the scripture. Wonder what his first act was that allowed Satan to get into his life. Wonder what was going on that allowed him to get to the point where the devil controlled him in such a fashion that he did. I don't know what his problem was, but I'll tell you this. The devil has a lot of ammunition. He has a lot of stuff that he can put before people that causes them to follow him and allow him to have access and control of their life. This entire system of this world is at his disposal. That's why the drug market is so, is so successful. That's why alcohol in our world is so successful. That's why lying and stealing and all the other things, dishonesty, uh, the integrity is so so 
how the, nowhere around today. The Bible tells us that there's an alternate world. And now what does this world, what does this thing tell us this morning? First of all, I want you to see the depths of this man's condition. He just wasn't a close to being possessed of the devil. He was totally possessed. So much so that he was not in control of his own mind. He was not in control of his own body. He was out of control. It is possible that the devil can so control you, so be in control of your life, that he controls every part about you. Don't ever think that he can. Now, I must say this before I go in the fog. Number one, the devil cannot, cannot possess the body of a Christian. Because the Christian is indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And God and the devil can't live in the same house. Amen. But now let me say this. While the devil cannot possess your body, he can oppress you to the point that you are almost not in control of your own person. Have you ever heard that or saw this phrase? The devil made me do it. And that's true with a lot of people. The devil does make them do it. Because they are controlled by satanic forces. Now, notice that everything that the devil gives to a person is designed for a reason. The devil will come to you and say, I'll give you this, I'll give you this, you can have this, you can do this. Yes, sir, nothing, anything you ask. Just, just, name it, any, be listening, this is his point, this is his all. Anything in this world is yours. Name it. It's yours. You can have it. And he'll see that you get it. But he has an military moment behind. Let me ask you, have you how many of you have gone fishing? By the way, Ryan, I saw that fish you caught the other day. Did you put it back and eat it? I threw it back. Oh man. <coughs> okay, I'll go catch it. No. I don't talk about ten times already. What a big old fish. Beautiful fish, man. I tell you, that's a that's a trophy model. I mind you well. But but like that. If you notice that I'm this is a measure of How many of you have you ever walk up to a lake and you got your rods and reels and all your fishing equipment and you bait the hook and you say, Hey everybody out there in that lake, I'm here and I'm gonna throw a hook out there. Get on it! You ever do that? I used to, I went fishing with my daddy a couple times, and if you said anything above a whisper, he was ready to kick you off the bank or feed you to the fish. Why? No, what you do is you bake that hook and you throw that hook out there. Have you ever gone fishing and just throw the hook out? What do you usually put on there? Bait. 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 Now, when you got the bait on there, you got the bait in the hook, and that bait is designed to please the fish so that you can do what to the fish? Right. So you can really get on catching. Everything the devil gives us, he wants to catch us. He wants to catch you. And once he catches you, then the race is on. That very bait that he catches you with becomes the bait that he keeps you on his line. Designed to catch you. The second step is this. What he catches you with, he will later control you. 
that which he catches you with will later be so great in your life that he will control you with that. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I want, I want, I want some more of that. Give me some more of that. Well, oh, okay, okay. I'll give you more of that. But I, and the more you give of that, no one that ever took the first drink of alcohol ever dreamed that they would become an alcoholic. They never took a drink of alcohol planning on becoming an alcoholic. I just heard about a lady who down in Winston-Salem that's embezzled of all the places, embezzled money. I guess she's going to embezzle in places. Oh, hey, it's got the money. $275,000 from a funeral. But let me say this, she probably never intended to embezzle $275,000. She probably had pressing needs. She said, I'll get this. <coughs> see, the devil always give you a plan to get out of it somewhere down the road. But you see, that time never comes to pass. It never comes to pass. So what he catches you with, he controls you with. And then, did you know what he controls you with? Will wind up condemning you. It wind up condemning you. In the Bible, Luke chapter 22, it gives us a story about the Apostle Peter. He came to Jesus one time and he said, Lord, if everybody else forsakes you, I want. And Jesus said to him, Get thee behind me, Satan. He said, Peter, the, the devil desires to have you. Did you know this? The devil will just love to have you. I think about these kids downstairs. The devil would love to have you. I talked to a young man last weekend. He was playing at a, at a wedding I performed. And I thought, his talent. Man, he had talent. Oh, my, he was so good on a piano. And you know what I told him? I said, I'm so glad the devil didn't give you a talent. The devil will take everything you got because he wants you. Number two, the depths of this command's condition. Number two, the attempts to reform it. Do you know what? There were attempts to reform this guy. He got so bad that the community got together. I imagine that they had a meeting that they said, we need, we need to do something about old Roy out here. <laughs> if there's anybody here named Roy, I'm sorry. But anyway, he said, we need to, we need to do something about old Roy out here. He is the, he's bad for business. The town council got to bed together. Uh, the women's society got together. Uh, all kinds of people got together and said, we need to do something. And finally somebody said, well, I'll tell you what, let's do, let's change the idiot, change the idiot up. Let's get some changes put on him so he can't get run around and act stupid. And so they got changed and put on him. And I imagine he stood there and watched them put them chains on them and before they could get out of sight, he had done popped in the chain. By the way, he didn't have no muscular body. What he did have was he had a power residing in him greater than that. The devil has more power than you got if you don't have the Spirit living in you. But if you've got the Holy Spirit living in you, greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. Amen. Now, the attempts were there. Man-made programs can have no effect on the devil. He don't subscribe to it. Now, the help that came to it. By the way, you know, sometimes you only have one shot at things. Sometimes you only have one opportunity. By the way, as best we know, this was the only time that Jesus was ever in Gadaria. It's either now or never. It's either today or the ain't no tomorrow. 
It's either he gets help now or he's forever <coughs> bound. And the Bible tells us that Jesus came to that island. I don't know why he came to that place, but I know this, that he left with a disciple on that island. And by the way, if the devil's playing in your life, and the devil's working in your life, and every person in this building this morning, we're having problems with the devil. You may be having problems with your washing machine, but you've got some problems with the devil. <laughs> you got problems with the, with the devil. Because the devil is not going to let you rest if you're not saved, and he's not going to let you rest if you are saved. If you're not saved, he'll say to you, I have a bunch of nonsense. That preacher's gone crazy. He's Man, where's he at? He's from, he's ancient of days. He don't know what he's talking about. There's too many smart people that don't believe this stuff. Well, go ahead. If that's what you believe, you have that. You have the option of doing that. But I'm going to tell you this. One day you'll find out that this old preacher was right. One day you'll find out that this old book was right. One day you'll find out that there's a real devil. Now, notice the request that the man had. Once he got taken care of, the Bible says that he came to Jesus and he said to worship him. And then Jesus cast the devil out. He removed the devil from the man. And the Bible says when they came out, he was sitting there closed in his right mind. Everything was good. By the way, there are four prayers in this. In this, there are actually five prayers in this in this section, and four of them were answered. But the very last prayer that was this man. This man wanted to go with Jesus. When Jesus got ready to leave, he said, "Lord, let me go with you." And Jesus said, "No." Why do you want to go with Jesus? I got to thinking about this was this morning about three o'clock. I couldn't sleep and so I got up. And I got thinking about this. Why, why do you want to go? I, I'll tell you why I want to go. He was afraid he'd get back in the same mess he was before. I'm going to tell you what, when God gets you out of one mess, you better not get back in. Right? <laughs> have you ever done that? Uh, I, have, you ever, have you ever got stuck in another hole and then got in another? <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> have you ever had somebody jump you off when your car wouldn't start and then you just cut the switch off? <laughs> Anybody ever done that? God bless you. I, 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 you got you got come. You got come. Isn't it, isn't it how we can do such stupid decisions? But this guy said, Jesus, I'm going to go with you. You are the source of my success right now. You're the reason I'm not in possessed by the devil right now. You're the reason. You got me out of this trouble. I got to go with you. I'm afraid if I don't go with you, I'll get back in the same mess. I need to be with you. If I can go with you, I'll tell everybody what you've done for me. What Jesus was saying to him, he said, no, you can't go with me. It's not so important that you understand that, you, that you're with me. But what you need to understand, sir, is that I'm with you. It doesn't make a difference whether we are together or not. I'm going to be with you. I will live with you. And I'm going to be with you. So this, young, this man 
the Bible tells us, that he went throughout all of his area. All of that area of the capitals, the Bible tells <clears throat> And he told what great thing the Lord had done for him. Did you know this? That the one thing that the devil wants to do with a Christian is to shut our mouths. He don't want us speaking up. What has the Lord done to you? I could, I bet you that I could bring people up here. I can. There are people in this congregation. I could bring you, bring you up here, and you could tell. You could tell what God has done to you and what He's done to you as their offspring. Well, let me ask you this. Are you telling them? You know, the Bible says we're witnesses if we're Christians. We're witnesses. And what does a witness do to tell what he knows? More than all. That's all you have to do. So this young man said, I want to go with you. Jesus said, no, stay there. Do you know of any place that needed to hear his testimony worse than this place? I mean, these folks have just said to Jesus, we don't want you here. <laughs> now, basically, what Jesus said was, I'm going to leave me here. And how did he do that? He left himself there in the person of this demonic man who's been delivered from the dead. I'm through. The Bible says this man went home. Can you imagine? I don't know how long he's been here. Maybe let's just say he's been, been like this for 10 years. Maybe he had a little daughter that was born right before he, he got possessed by the devil. And I can see little Mary Jane now. She's out playing in the yard. And she looks down the road. She sees a figure coming. And she looks. She don't know who it is. She looks and looks. And the figure gets closer and closer. See, this, this fellow may have not seen his kids that he recognized them for 10 years. Maybe we're in our, in our storm. But the Bible tells us this, that he went home. And I bet you that little girl went running to her mom and said, man, coming up the road, I don't know who he is. Come, and she's looking. I'll bet she recognized him. And she got the little girl and said, come on, Mary, let's go in the house. And they went in the house. And they got in the deepest part of the house. They got in the darkest closet to take it yet. They didn't want to be, she, she recognized who it was. Oh, but she didn't realize what had happened. She recognized who he was, but she didn't recognize how he was now. And the Bible tells us that he comes knocks on the door. Oh, Mary, don't you go. No, don't you say the word. Be real quiet. Let me go away. And he persisted in not. And to protect the daughter, she goes to the door. And he speaks to her in a loving tone. He speaks to her in a kind voice. He speaks to her as someone with his in his right mind. And he tells her the story of what happened. You see, the only one that can make a difference in a person like that is Jesus. The only one that can change that, the only one that can do that and take care of that is Jesus. Now there are three responses that you can give to this message this morning. <clears throat> are you listening? Here's one of them. You can say this, hit the road, Jesus, and don't come back no more. That's what they told him in the city. Hit the road. I don't want nothing to do with this. It's hit the road. Number two, the Bible says when they came out and saw this man, they marveled. 
They were totally taken back what they saw. They couldn't believe what they saw. You may hear this message this morning and just marvel. You may, you may say, I can't believe that this is like this. But you know what in this essence they really said? I marvel that you've done this. This is no doubt one of the greatest things I've ever seen happen. But I'm going to stick with the devil a little while longer. And see if you don't get with Jesus, you're sticking with the devil. Amen? Either with it. Jesus said, you're either for me or against me. One of the two. There's no middle ground. You say, yeah, but I don't want to be, I don't want to be either or. No, you can't help that. Either for him or against him. I'm going to stick with the devil. Or you can say this, I'm going to go tell my story. <coughs> I'm going to go tell my story. I'm going to tell how the Lord's delivered me. I'm going to tell what the Lord's done to me. I'm going to be a witness for Him. Wherever I go, I'm going to let people know that I've been set free. So what is your response? Now let me say this. The devil works in every church service. You know that? Every church service where the Word of God is preached. The devil works. He works on the preacher. He works on the people. He works on all of us. But he never works any harder than he does when it comes time to respond to the message. You see, he'll tell you, oh, you don't have to do nothing now. Just hold it off. When he said this, Jesus was only there one time. All of you say, well, I'm going to take that chance. You have an option. This may be your last chance and your only chance to respond to the Lord. You, there may be